Okay, video 13, and we're going to be looking at the head of the document. What the hell do I mean by that? Well, let's have a look. And we've got the code here on the left and the web page on the right. Um, I've been telling telling you all the way through about the HTML, end HTML, uh, the HTML element as such, and I've also been making sure that I include the body element throughout. Now, if HTML and end HTML forms an element and body sits in there, then it implies that there's something else that can sit between in HTML, and that's called the head. Now, it's really important not to get these two confused at all. The body is for showing the data that you want to have uh, displayed in the browser window. The head has a completely different purpose. Now, if I show you something, I'm going to just put that into there, save it, and run it. You can see that the word has still appeared, and that's because your browser has to make a decision. Putting elements like the paragraph element, header, anything that's for displaying in the head area is considered illegal. But the problem is for your browser is what's most important to display the data or obey the rules of HTML. And Internet Explorer with loads of other browsers will show the word hello. They will decide that the displaying of the data overrides the illegality of the head declaration. Now that's fine but don't trust it. Internet Explorer might one day decide not to obey that rule, you might be using a browser that doesn't obey that rule, or more importantly, when you move to things like mobile devices, the error trapping, the error captured systems within the browsers are much more limited, and there's a damn good chance that it won't pick up, won't allow this, it will ignore it, it will break the rules. Don't give your website the risk of not working, don't break that rule, it's really simple. So if the head is not for displaying data to display, then what is it for? And the answer is really simple. It's for search engines. It's for telling the browser more about your website. It's just there. It's what we call metadata. It's stuff that the browser can make use of, search engine can make use of, other items can make use of, but it's not for the viewer. It's not for the visitor to your website to be aware of. They're not interested. If they are, they can look at the code, but it won't appear in the main part of the page. We're going to have a look at each part and go through how this head is so important to your web page. But before we do, I want to draw your attention to this top line here. I haven't used this before. We've made the HTML the top line, but this is the very first line of any website. This is called the doc type for obvious reasons, and this particular doc type is a doc type for HTML5. Now, before HTML5, doc types were incredibly long, they had to deal with a number of other issues, but HTML5 has resolved a lot of those issues, and therefore, this is the doc type for HTML5. Simply that line there goes in the top of every single HTML document you have. Now, why do you need it? Well, HTML, the tag HTML, tells the browser, browser what language you're using. This one tells your browser what version of that language you're using. And that's really important. If you don't use the doc type, then browsers such as Internet Explorer will fail to work. There will be elements you'll put into there and that everything looks correct, the code will look fantastic, but it simply will not function. So Internet Explorer particularly needs the doc type, but it should be there. It's, uh, again, an illegal thing not to have it there, and it can mean that your web page won't work. So it's very simple. Just make sure that line is in the top of all of your HTML documents. So this head document, I'm using the comments here, so I've commented out a huge amount of things. So I've only got the head and end head that are active. That means that there's nothing being used and this is a normal web page. Now the first thing I want to draw your attention to is I want you to have a look at this top line here. You can see it's referencing where my file has come from. In fact, it's repeating what's in the address bar there. If I extend that out, you can see there's the location and it's repeating there and when I move my mouse over top, it highlights that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simply move this down one line. 
and this is called the title tag for obviously reasons that's the title element in its entirety and you can see that all I've got is title end title and then some phrase now if I save that and go to here remember keep an eye on here push that and it appears there not only that but it's now appearing in the list and actually it will appear down here if you've got an old version of Windows or whatever else it will say the file there that's not what it's for it's for search engines search engines will use that information so that when someone searches for your page it's that one that will appear it's that name that will appear for this particular page so be aware the title is really useful when you want to have your web pages displayed correctly you put a title on every single HTML page, make them different so that people can see when they go to search engine, all oh, right, that's their table of contents, all oh, that's their contact us. So the title is actually really important, but it has a kind of secondary function of also appearing on the top of the tag uh, and in the um, toolbar at the bottom. Along with that is this one here. This is the base target, and this seems to have very little purpose. But what I'm going to do is simply push that back there and just show you what it looks like. Just save that at the moment. And I'm going to refresh this, and I'm going to click on this command here. And as you can see, it's going to take us to W3Schools. Click on there, and W3Schools replaces my site. We know that. We've seen it before, and there is the HTML that makes that happen. I haven't put the target on here. I've broken the rules, and just because I keep telling you you should be obeying them, um, I really should do as well. Okay, there we go. And all that's done, as you probably remember, is it adds the tag. So if I move over top, the target, not target, Go! What a muppet! Title. Can't type for living. Okay, there you go. W three school. So that's appearing there. Um, nothing's changed. Click on there. Still takes me there. Still replaces my site. Now I did tell you that you could put target in there, which is why I made the typo previously. But actually, I can use base to control so many of these features. And the best one is for this one that tells the system exactly what to do with all your hyperlinks it's one command but if we see what that actually does that now forces it even though the link doesn't define it it's like the default setting it's telling it what the default setting is for all anchors so very very useful because in a way you don't then have to keep remembering to put target in so that's really good Okay, having a look at this page, we've got that before. I'm going to move the comment line down one more position. Remember, pause the video, by the way, write this all in, then you can follow through and see if yours does the same thing. Now, what I've got here is something strange. It's the link tag, and the um, attributes for this are rel, um, which is style sheet, type, which is text, CSS, and the href, hyperlink reference. So it's clearly going to somewhere, styles slash test.css. So relative to the style sheet, what does it mean? Well, let's have a look at my website. Obviously, I've got this page, the index, and here I've got the styles folder. That's what's referred to here. And inside the styles folder, I have my test file, test.css. Notice it's not called test.html, it's test.css. I actually have that here. That's just to, just to confirm that part, part, by the way. CSS cascading style sheets file. So if you're in Notepad++, you must make sure you're saving it as that type and then add .css to the end. As long as it's .css, it will work, it will be happy, and whatever the first name is, no spaces. But let's have a look at this. The word body appears, not as we're used to seeing it as a tag, but just simply as a word. But then we've got curly brackets, don't confuse them with normal brackets, they're curly brackets. And then background color, which we've seen before with the hexadecimal coding. Red is zero, blue is zero, it's the green that's set to FF, remember duplicates. If we look at the P, again, there's no uh, greater than, less than symbol, it's simply the letter P, color, and then which we've seen before, and then again the hexadecimal. Red full on, no uh, green, no blue. What happens is this line tells the system there is a style sheet, it's got pure text in it, 
and this is its location. As long as it can find the style sheet, then what it will then do is read all this in. Now there are two ways of doing this. It will actually fully load the page and then apply the style sheet. Now if your web page is fast, you won't notice any difference, but sometimes you'll notice the page will build slowly as you're sitting there. So you'll see it and then things will start moving into place. And that's because this, first of all, the whole page is applied and then the CSS is applied. There is another option called import. That's not for us to cover here, but that does speed that up, but slows down your overall web page. So there's a, there's a positive and negative. So this loads us up. So what does this actually do? Well, this is the first time we're going to see CSS as an external file. We've seen them in line, but this is the first time we've seen them as an external file. And what this does is this is saying, if you find the term, the tag body, then apply this rule to it. And we can have several of these rules separated by semicolon. And same thing here. If you find the P tag, then apply this to it. Very, very simple. Let me just save this to make sure I've saved it and then reload. Now, if you have a look, I haven't added anything to the paragraph. I haven't added anything to the body. All I've done is added the style sheet and yet it's gone green with a red text. And if I look at the style sheet, that's what it's applied. Now, why is that useful? Well, actually, really simply, all I've got to do is put that into every single one of my HTML pages and it will be a green background with red text. I only need to do this once and if I make a change to this one file then that font, that sorry, the change will go across all of the pages. So if I change, let's say, um, font size equals 140%, so let's make it all a lot bigger and save that, then all I've got to do is reload the page and that would affect all of my web pages that have that one line in it just the same line repeated over and over again hopefully you'll begin to see the power of a CSS because all I've got to do is one document controls all of my web pages I can have 700 a thousand 20,000 web pages one CSS will control the whole lot but like some ring that someone made a book about okay that's the link. Let's have a look at another thing. Let's move this right down. Now we've got some metas. I said these were called meta tags and here are some meta tags. These are general purpose meta tags. Metas have particular functions after them. I've only got three here, author, generator and copyright. And there's two, ta there's two attributes you've got to worry about. The name attribute and the content attribute. The name attribute tells author, so if a search engine comes along, it will pick up author and content will be my name. Generator, what software have I used to do this? Notepad++. Copyright, what year of copyright is this? And this is a special symbol, this is at copy. And this is a copyright symbol. Um, it may be viewable in the source code, but generally isn't. I don't know, it sits there as it normally is. But that will normally rotate and show the copyright sign on any web page. You don't have to have it, but you find it difficult to show the copyright symbol otherwise. And we will use it uh, later on when we come to look at some designs. So that's meta. There are lots of these. And again, referring to the good old faithful, here's the HTML tag. Uh, we can see some there. Keywords, author, we'll look at some of these later on. Uh, going down to here, here's some of them, and there's the name, scheme, HTTP, uh, content, which we've always seen. But that, clicking on the name will take you to uh, this this tag, sorry, chose the wrong one there. There, and you can see that there are a number of attributes you can have in there. I've shown you author and copyright. Um, I've also shown you generator but there are other ones Google bot keywords we're going to have a look at and others we will come across refresh robots uh, just in case we decide to get invaded by huge metallic ob now I'm lying to you it's got nothing to do with those but uh, it could do you never know one day haha <laughs> not a chance right um, let's go back to here so you can use these very effectively to tell your browser and the search engines what you want to do so let's move this down and here's two more and I did say we'd have a look at two more these are used to be used by search engines the first one here name does still get used um, search engines such as Yahoo Google 
uh, bling will still use these and the description will then become the wording underneath the title so you'll see your title appear and this will be the main wording otherwise the browser the search engine will just take some of the text out of your page put a description in um, you know this is my personal site and that will appear in Google or Yahoo or whatever your favorite search engine is the keywords one is less used people still use them so I thought it's best to include it here people will tell you they're really useful they're not I can tell you search engines like uh, Google do not use keywords Yahoo does not use keywords and that's partly because the number of keywords you'd need to actually fulfill this it's case sensitive so if I wanted head with a capital H I'd have to put that in head with all capitals I'd have to think of every variation that someone will worry about but they should have to have each keyword and most search engines now search through my text and decide its own keyword search anyway so this is a kind of defunct but it's still there you'll still see people using it and some people will profess it still works beautifully um, I personally don't think so but yeah that's me so it's their keywords and that just helps search engines build an idea so when someone goes to their search engine and types in uh, meta HTML then it's going to find that that's listed in my site so my site must be about that okay the last tag I'm going to worry about is this one and I'm going to get rid of my comments because there's no need for them now this doesn't have a name it has something called HTTP equivalent or a quiv and the command is refresh and quite simply this does exactly what it says after five seconds this will force my page to refresh and load whatever comes after the URL notice the structure of this content five semicolon that's the full stop with the comma underneath five seconds go to that URL now sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and you'll see lots of websites will say to you you know all be aware of that let's see if it works on mine five seconds of course is I had a long time to wait on a video so we'll see and there it goes so it has worked doesn't always work that's why someone will say if it doesn't change click here simple easy to use and that's the head command head for metadata body for content don't get them confused but hopefully you can now see the head is really powerful you need the doc type at the top I haven't proven that to you but you need to trust that it's needed there and CSS do have a separate folder do put it in there keep the index to itself but you can start to see that this is a very very powerful tool hope that's been helpful hopefully see you in video 14